In this video, I will give you a quick overview of the four basic functions of qualitative data analysis software. In a nutshell, qualitative data analysis software can help you organize, annotate, search, and display your data. Organization is a central part of analysis, but it's important to mention that the software does not do any analysis for you. You can import data into a project file. This means that all of your data lives in one space or is linked to your project file. This way, you don't have to look for it in all kinds of places on your computer. Think of QDA software as a home for your data. You're basically building your own research database. Typically, you can import textual data, for example, Word documents or PDFs. Most commercial software also allows you to import or link videos, audio files, and tables. One software will be better at dealing with documents, another might be better with dealing with PDFs, videos, or tables. So choosing your software depends a lot on your data and what you want to do with it. When you import data in QDA software, you're basically creating an envelope that contains your data. You can create different folders for different types of data, for example, one for field notes, one for interviews, and one for news articles. Good QDA software allows you to use timestamps in your transcripts. The timestamps are links to your recordings. Clicking on a part of your transcript opens the audio or video file at that exact position. That way, you'll always have access to your original data. Typically, you can add additional information to the envelope. For example, if you have newspaper articles, you can attach the location of the newspaper, the publication date, or the name of the author to the envelope. This will help you later when you want to look at specific parts of your data. For example, only at news articles from Wisconsin, as opposed to news articles from Iowa. But let's take one step at a time. The second major function of QDA software is the annotation of your data. There are two general ways of annotating data. One is by reducing data, and one is by expanding data. Reducing data is often called coding, but we can also call it tagging or indexing. So how do you code? You open up one of your imported documents, and you'll see your data, for example, a newspaper article. Think of your codes as boxes for specific snippets of data. For example, you'll have one box for pollution and one for health concerns. You can assign snippets of your data to these boxes. So if a section of a newspaper deals with pollution, we'll stick that snippet into the pollution box. Over time, the pollution box will contain snippets from all over your project file. In a way, you're creating an index of your data. Your coding boxes are typically ordered hierarchically. This means that codes can also contain subcodes. Some programs also organize codes in families. In this case, one code can be a member of many families. This lets you create a network of codes. The great thing about QDA software is that those snippets are not really cut out of your texts. They're assigned to the box, but our newspaper article still stays intact. Also, one piece of data can be assigned to several boxes. For example, the same piece of data can be assigned to pollution and to the box health concerns. This will help you find them later. For example, I can specifically look at all the sections in newspapers where authors discuss health concerns and pollution. The second kind of annotation is expanding your data. For example, writing down your thoughts or connecting data with literature. This is often called memoing but you can also call it making notes or simply documentation. Good QDA software lets you attach your written analyses to your data envelopes. For example, a summary of a specific interview or news article. You can also attach memos to your coding boxes. For example, a summary of all the passages about pollution. And last, you can attach your memos to segments of texts. For example, capturing analytic thoughts about a specific paragraph. 
The great thing is that your analytic thoughts are just a few clicks away from the data that sparked them. Remember when I said that QDA software is a home for your data? It's actually much more than that. It's also a home for your thoughts and for your writing. QDA software is a metacognitive tool. Not only does it give you access to your data, it also gives you access to your analytic thoughts and how they develop over time. I've already mentioned the third major function of QDA software, searching. When you code, you basically create an index of your data. You can tell the software to display all the sections of data that you coded at pollution. Or you can display all the sections that are about pollution and health concerns. Remember the metadata that you attach to your envelopes? Here's where it can come in handy. For example, you could tell the program to search only in newspaper articles that were published in Wisconsin as opposed to newspaper articles published in Iowa. The program can then show you all sections in which newspapers in Wisconsin deal with pollution and health concerns for this specific subset of your data. You shouldn't expect that you'll save any time by using QDA software, and I'll talk more about this in future videos. With QDA software, you can make your data highly accessible. You can look at very specific parts of your data within seconds. But laying the groundwork for this is a time-consuming process. And of course, you'll be the one who has to do the analysis. So far, I've talked about organization, annotation, and searching. The fourth function I wanted to introduce is display. And I'll count export as one form of data display. In good QDA software, you can export anything that you have in your database. Memos, coded segments, and of course whole items of your data, such as a news article. It's important to choose a software that exports data the way you want to see it. It's very useful to check out export functions when you shop around for a software package. Some programs allow you to create mind maps, which are connected with your data. Often, programs also offer quantified visualizations of your coding work. These coding visualizations can be great to get a different view on your data during analysis. But they are no qualitative analysis themselves, because they are, in the end, quantifications. When choosing QDA software, you should assess whether your method really benefits from those features, or if they are just flashy extras. This was a rough overview of the core things QDA software can help you with. Organizing, annotating, searching through, and displaying data. In future videos, I will talk about some strategies for choosing a software that fits your data, your method, and your preferences as an analyst.